Hey everybody! The new 66th episode of Skibidi Toilet is finally out, and oh my god, it's an incredible episode! Yes, we waited for it for a very long time, but it was worth it. Dafuk called it, The Final Battle Begins, and apparently the entire 22nd season will be about the final battle between the Skibidi Toilets and the Alliance. We saw the Skibidi base, the TV men's base, Cinema Man, and all the top Alliance agents. I found so many secrets and Easter eggs, and in this video I will show you all of them. Get your tea and snacks ready, this is going to be incredible, let's go! Let's get started with everything in order. Remember in episode 64, the squad split up, the Titans went after G-Man and the rest of the squad flew on towards the Skibidi base. I've already mentioned that the base is apparently somewhere in Africa. So now we see that the Alliance squad has found the Skibidi base and is trying to capture it. We can see that the defenses here are very strong. There are hangars, Skibidi military, and even square toilets. I don't know what they're for. It looks like military towers or something. Notice how heavily armed the cameramen are. These big guys have grenade launchers, hypno guns, machine guns. By the way, everything except the hypno gun is a weapon from Half-Life 2. There's even the toilet mobile from episode 25. We finally got to see it again. Like I said, these rocket launchers are useless. This guy here thinks so too and throws them away after firing a shots. How about this one combat camera helicopter? Now we know what Dafuk has been working on for so long. By the way, POV cameraman was just sitting there watching the others the whole time, even though he could have been helping them shoot back. Notice that the gunshot looks more realistic than in previous episodes. The quality of the show really does increase every time. We see a cargo helicopter and another one for the engineers. It looks like the Alliance has decided to put all their forces into this attack. The POV pulls out a tablet and sees a message from G-Man and Skibidi the scientist. It seems they took the phone away from Titan and decided to take selfies and prank the agents. Let's deal with the details in this picture. First off, the Titans are lying in front of the Skibidi, which means no one took them to the base to repair. Skibidi just grabbed them. The G-Man is unharmed, but he also has weak guns. Many of you said that the real G-Man had cool lasers in episode 57, but that theory fails. It seems to be just a clone from episode 38 that was given two more weak lasers. Apparently G-Man has a lot of clones and the Alliance is expecting to meet a mob of G-Men. Also, Cameraman has the number 10, 56, and I still haven't been able to decode that. If you add up 10 and 56, you get 66, which is this episode. The only thing I noticed in both episode 10 and 56 was Cameraman wearing a brown coat. Maybe in episode 10 he just had a different tie, who knows. If you figure out what that means, post it in the comments. Now take note of the Titan Cameraman's core. It's sparking like he's infected, oh my god. If this guy will fight on the side of the Skibidi toilets, the Alliance will have a big problem in the final battle. He's also got some sort of defense against TV men on his camera, so apparently the Skibidi have realized who they're about to meet. Apparently all the agents got the same message and realized there's nothing left to lose. It's now or never. They drop their weapons and run to fight the Skibidi toilets. I've never seen anything like that in the show. The morale of this squad is off the charts. By the way, why this Skibidi has two glowing things above his eyes, I didn't understand. They didn't seem to be there before, but okay. In this episode, we got to see all the main characters of the Skibidi Toilet universe. This speaker man right here is the guy in the gray suit who helped us in episode 24. POV cameraman avenging Titan and giving Skibidi a smacky slaps. But this guy doesn't seem to be rushing into the fight. I think it's Dafuk. Who else can calmly stand there and hold out a knife to one of his creatures? Yeah, it looked pretty epic. I'm not gonna lie. Now we know that after the Skibidi are destroyed, their eyes turn white. Did we see a live zombie here or what? Man, this looks really weird. The cameramen have never been so brave. I'm really proud of them now. And no, I think I'm getting excited a little early. The POV cameraman saw the big Skibidi soldier and stood up in fear. I don't know what he's afraid of. After all, the rocket launchers are already discharged. This trooper is no longer a threat. Maybe the sound of that little circular saw scared him. And what happened here? Oh my god, I've been waiting four episodes for this. Speaker Woman is back. And apparently along with Black Speakerman, they decided to open their own barbershop. I think Skibidi's really happy with that service. All right, apparently Speakerman got a little tired and decided to walk. And here's my favorite useless Skibidi helicopter. He really had a chance to destroy the POV, but we still have two minutes of the episode. Come on. 
Well, the camera woman gets involved. She shoots and manages to give us a thumbs up. Geez, she looks pretty good too. Ahem, what am I talking about? This speakerman believed in himself too much and got some balls from Skibidi Spider. He survived unharmed, by the way. Apparently, he's made of titanium or something. I was even a little worried when this spider pointed his ding-dong at us. But apparently having the infected Skibidi helicopter flying at him at full speed was more interesting, and they happily rushed over to hug each other. And oh yeah, we finally got to see TV Woman again. Ahem. I mean her ability, the parasite that infects Skibidi. And that toilet looks a little creepy. Why is it here? Maybe they're gonna make a new Skibidi. Or maybe it's just a statue that greets all the guests. Lucky my restroom doesn't look like that. And we finally see the trio of ladies. I'm so satisfied. And it's not even episode 69. By the way, there's a screen here, which means there's about to be some sort of Easter egg on it. That's how it's always worked on this show. Well, this is the second Ding Dong being directed at us in this episode. Thanks to Plungerman, he saved us from the Skibidi Strider as well, ripping off his cannons and breaking his robotic legs. Speaker Woman, on the other hand, apparently isn't interested in Plunger. She's eyeballing the Black Speakerman. And look how he lands after jumping out of the toilet. Damn! Plunger Man is one of my favorite characters in this universe. He's a true legend. But TV Woman apparently doesn't think so. But look at the way Camera Woman looks at him. The guys decided to repeat the legendary moment again, just like the Titans. Looks like the Skibidi base is captured. Mission accomplished. Time to go inside. But the army of Skibidi toilets from episode 65 has just returned from their mission. And instead of joyful shouts of Skibidi, 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 they saw destroyed toilets and a crowd of agents at the entrance. By the way, somewhere out there in the smoke, we see a Skibidi scientist. TV woman hugged the other women, and I think this is the best trio in the history of this show. TV man seems to have been watching the whole situation and immediately came to the rescue. This TV man apparently realized what stupid things Plunger Men could do, so he told him to get out. I really like how all the Alliance members work together and help each other. And I think I was suspicious of the TV men for nothing. They seem like really good guys. As I was saying, Da Fuchs' face appears on the screen once again. Big TV Man teleported the container straight to Skibidi's base to use it to save all the agents. I think they all realize that without the Titans, no one can beat the scientist and G-Man. There was only one big cameraman left, but he was intercepted by the mutant from episode 62. You know why he cut off his camera? Because the body could be used to make another Skibidi mutant. When Big TV Man blinded him, the mutant pulled his glasses out of his back pocket to block out the light. TV Man, on the other hand, didn't seem to like this guy and had some bad things to say about him. The doors closed and the big guy teleported the container to TV Man's base and said, We see a lot of TV Men around us. One big guy is looking at us right from behind the wall. Apparently even the main agents weren't at this base, but Plungerman was still flying on a toilet somewhere in Africa. One of the TV guys is looking from above. Turns out there's a lot more of them than I thought. We're approached by TV man scientist, AKA Simpy Boy. Yeah, I'm not lying. He's got a picture of a TV woman on his name tag. At first I thought it was just some random TV, but my Discord subscriber told me it was TV woman. Note the switch. So our brown cameraman has some serious competitor, by the way, we still haven't seen our original simp. TV Simpy Boy tells us this. And I really don't know if he means the base or the drawing on his chest. And how does he want to keep that secret? Destroy everyone who comes here so no one finds out. Yeah, he's a little weird, but at least these guys have a scientist. Which means there's someone there to improve Cinema Man. He decided to take a quick look at us, by the way. Yes, we don't see the new improvements, but we'll definitely see them in episode 67 or 68. He says this at the end. And that's when I started to get a little worried. What if the TV men are helping the Alliance in the war against the Skibidi, but when they win, they want to do something terrible with the world? In any case, the G-Men and the Scientist are ready to fight. Cinema Man is on his way. 
And we're clearly looking forward to something even more incredible than this episode. By the way, my Instagram followers learn the secrets faster than the video comes out. And on Discord, we sometimes talk with you guys. Be sure to watch these videos. I hope you subscribed to the channel, liked and wrote in the comments which woman from this trio you liked the most. And that was me, Isa Toilet. See ya!